Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. Man, we're about to cross 100,000 downloads. I am going to remake an intro. I have loved the intro that I have, but uh, it's time to switch it up <laughs> after 100 episodes. Uh, what, it's like 120 episodes now almost, and uh, 100, almost 100,000 downloads. To celebrate that, I'll probably toss it out there. Um, hey, so I was uh, I was on I was on stage just teaching the fat event. It's been super busy. I'm sorry I've not done a podcast here for a little uh, little while. Funny story though, I was on stage and I get I get excited, uh, which I know is hard to imagine. <laughs> I get excited in general, uh, but uh, I was on stage and and it was the second day. It was about, it was like one o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, the second day is a long day for me. It's 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 twelve hours on stage at least, um, anywhere from twelve to fifteen hours, uh, and then Russell will come on as well, and um, and I was just wrecked. And he's you know anyway. Um, it's a lot of fun though. I mean, I absolutely love it. I, I, I enjoy it like crazy. Um, so, well, I was, I was on stage and I was, I was jumping around. I was getting excited. I can't remember what I was teaching about. Um, but I, my, the, the pants that I was wearing, you guys will like this story. The pants that I was wearing were a little bit more like loose fitting. And, uh, I was like, we were jumping around and I, and, and we, I was teaching them. I can't remember what I was teaching them. I think I was teaching about, um, like storytelling or something like that. I think it's talking about energy, how to be, why it matters. Anyway, I can't tell you remember what it was, but basically, um, I jumped and no one else knew, but when I came back down, like I totally ripped my pants, like right up my butt cheek <laughs> and nobody knew. And so, and I didn't know how bad the rip was. And so I'm like, I'm like jumping around on say, Hey, like I have no idea what's going on. I just know it's getting drafty back there. And I was like, what the heck? Like I've never had this happen in my life ever. And uh, so I, I, there was a whiteboard there and I, I, I'd write on whiteboards a lot. I draw on them a lot to illustrate certain principles and stuff. But I wouldn't turn my back and actually write on the whiteboard in front of me because I didn't know how bad it was. <laughs> I didn't know how bad it was. So eventually after a while, like I was like leaning around the whiteboard, like writing down. Anyway, and I, um, <laughs> um, in my mind, I was laughing and I was like, I'm literally going to podcast about this. So this is me doing that. And uh, I decided I would call a break. I was like, all right, I'm gonna call a break, and um, and uh, just coothly remove myself from the room. And so I remove myself from the room, and I grab grab my friend Miles, who's uh, who's also uh, he's in a ClickFunnels employee there. He works at uh, ClickFunnels. He's the DJ, basically runs all the sound and lights and all that stuff for me while I'm doing those things. And and um, and uh, I was like, hey man, I need you to be a bro. And look at my butt. <laughs> and he's like, what? I was like, I freaking ripped my pants, dude. And so, like, we're, like, hiding in a corner. He, like, looks at my butt. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, dude, as long as you stand perfectly straight, like, your shirt tail covers it. It's not even a big deal. And I was like, okay. So, for, like, the next, like, five hours, I had the most perfect unnaturally amazing posture that I have ever had in my entire life. <laughs> and, anyway, no one was the wiser until the next day I told literally everyone that story while I was up there. And, uh, and I know that some people might think that, but that's weird, but it's to illustrate a point, okay? It's to illustrate a point. It's, it's whatever weird things going on in your life, whatever it is that's going on, what it, whatever it is that's happening to you, it's your, that develops your attractive character when you start to share those things, Right? I know now not to wear slightly baggy jeans while I'm on stage jumping around. <laughs> Who would have known? I'll make that secret 12 and like some stage presenting workshop coming up or I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, anyway, but, but it's true though, okay? It's all about, you guys got to understand this, okay? When it comes to your attractive character, okay, and new opportunities, right? New opportunities, new opportunities, you compete by being brand new, right? All right. Your attractive character, though, is also something to be treated not as brand new, but as different. Like, okay, let me let me explain what I mean. Okay, in creating new opportunities, in creating new opportunities, like your your business should be a new opportunity, right? Your business is a new opportunity. The product itself 
is a new opportunity to somebody else. And you, there's, if you've never listened to, if you never, if this, if this is a brand new concept to you, you should probably go back a few episodes and start listening. Right, right. It's a pretty standard idea now, right? To find something that's a brand new product, brand new idea. Um, your attractive character, though, also needs to make some kind of evolvement. Okay. Um, um, when I was in college, I wrote this ebook. It was before I ever read dot com secrets i didn't even know who russell was i think and wait i'm thinking timeline yeah i had no idea who he, i didn't even know he existed okay and i wrote this ebook and what i did is i talked about this this concept called product big bang theory where where most of the time people go out and they they say hey come up with something that's totally brand new something that's completely out of the box right so i call it product big bang theory meaning it just popped out of nowhere wow this is something brand new it's not stemming from anything else and product big bang theory is an issue Okay, it's scary. It's freaky. It's risky. It's one of the sc- most most risky products strategies you could ever have, right? And call instead, I called it product evolution. I never actually released that ebook. I probably should. It was good. And uh, so when I saw Russell's book about dot com secrets, about first funnel hacking, what's going on? I was like, ah, oh, product evolution, right? I'm just I'm just taking what already exists and making it. I'm making it. Uh, uh, new, but I'm stemming it from something that already exists, right? It's the same thing with like, with like. So when it comes to products, that works really, really well. When it comes to your attractive character, though, you can't really stem from another individual. You can't really say why, why, why? Because you need to. You can't compete on something like a strength. Okay, if you compete on things like strengths, it's like the scariest thing to do. Also, as far as your attractive character goes. So I'm um, just. Follow me here real quick, okay? I know this is, I'm, I'm getting kind of deep. Just follow me for a second, okay? When it comes to products, right, you're trying to create a new opportunity, but stemming from something that's already successful, right? It's the combination between funnel hacking and creating a new opportunity, right? It's a combination between those two. You don't f- just funnel hack and you don't just create a new opportunity. You combine them, you do them in tandem, right? That's like one of the most secure, easy ways to actually create a new opportunity for yourself. Right. I'm sorry. When a, a successful business, a successful product, one that is slightly disruptive in nature and creates a mass movement. Right. That's one of the easiest ways. First, funnel hack. Second, create a new opportunity from what you funnel hacked. Not something that totally never existed before. That's scary. Okay. When it comes to your attractive character, though, there is always somebody who will be faster, better, stronger, better looking, whatever it is. Right. So you don't compete on those things. Instead. You compete on your differences. There's only one you. There's only one me. And it's very easy for me to stand out when I stopped competing on strengths. Okay? When it came when it came to my attractive character, I'm talking about. Just my own individual. The way I deliver, the way I talk, uh, uh, my stories, uh, my personas, the, what, what I put out into the world, right? Out into the marketplace as far as my own character goes, my, own, my, my brand, right? There will always be someone faster, better, stronger, better looking, er, 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 right? ER, 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 all over the place, right? That's a scary place to go. It's a scary place to be, right? So I don't compete on strengths and I don't compete on weaknesses. I'm not, I'm not trying to, well, no, I'm worse than you. I'm not, I'm, worse than, I'm not trying to compete on, on weaknesses, right? But what I am trying to do is I'm trying to compete on my differences, okay? This is it's a different way to think about it. It's, it's, it's a... I don't know if that's a, hopefully it's making sense what I'm talking about. Okay. So I, I, I talked about this a lot at this last fat event that, that your character development is, it's paramount to all this, how, 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 how your business runs. Okay. The way your product sells, the longevity of it, follow up sales. Okay. Not just the initial sale, but, but repeat buys. A lot of that starts to depend now on your attractive character. You can get a lot of people to buy something from you once, but to get repeat buyers, there's gotta be something attractive about your business, about yourself. Right. And I don't want my attractiveness to be based on strengths. Otherwise what ends up happening is I link myself and compare myself to the ideals of pop culture. That's scary. Okay because pop culture changes momently, not even daily or hourly, it changes momently, right? And so what I'm trying to say here with this, with this whole attractive character thing, I wasn't even planning on talking about this in this one, but I'm just kind of on a roll with it. Um, uh, stop hiding what's different about you. If you don't normally wear a shirt and tie, do not put one on to go put a picture of yourself on the internet, right? I made that mistake. If you go to sales funnel broker right now, so I'm gonna go change sales funnel broker like crazy, right? 
I love, I, uh, to be honest, I like wearing suits and ties. Okay, but it's not the norm, man. I wear that like maybe once every few months, right? I'll wear a tie for church on Sundays, right? But not a suit. And I'm wearing a full-out suit in that picture. I don't like that. I should not have done that. That was not, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Whatever it is, that you, uh, that's why I like, I tell you guys random stuff. Like, there is literally, um, I, you, know, you guys know I'm really into airsoft. Um, I don't know if, it's like paintball. Right, there's a sniper rifle next, right next to me that is barely finished rebuilding. Tons of fun. I love that stuff. Right? Why do I talk about random things like that, Stephen? What does that have to do with internet marketing? It has everything to do with internet marketing. It has everything to do with your character. It has everything to do with why why people will be attracted to you. Why would I tell a story about me ripping my pants and my butt cheek? Right? If it had no, it's not just to tell the story. Is it funny? Yes, it is very funny. And and I was laughing about like crazy. I wasn't gonna say anything while they. Well, I didn't know how bad it was, but I told them all later. Be willing to expose yourself. Okay. Be willing to expose your character flaws. Talk about the things that you're not good at. It's not about. I'm not trying to say like, oh, look at me. I'm terrible. I'm a Debbie Downer. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, don't be afraid when the story helps. Whatever you're doing, do not be afraid to use a story, even though it will appear to you to be a little bit to your detriment. It's not true. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not true. That's not how it actually works. Okay. It's just, it's so funny. You will become human. You'll become human to your audience. You'll become human to those who are following you when you are willing uh, to, to let others in. And for a lot of entrepreneurs, what I've noticed is they like one, one sale. That's not super hard, right? Building a, you could build a webinar funnel, trip our funnel, you can, any funnel, but like the follow-up sales, a lot of that starts to depend now your actual brand, right? I don't care about brand on the first sale at all. Okay. I, I really don't. Uh, I don't even take time to sit down and like, just start thinking about brand. I build it as I go. It's not something that I ever just sit down and like start thinking about the way I, I guess, build my brand as I go. I tell stories. Right when when I'm the brand, when you are the brand, right? And even if you are not the brand, your company still has stories, right? Your company still has an origin story, even if you don't have a, a specific face for it. But anyway, that's all I was trying to tell you guys. Um, don't be afraid of telling stories about whatever it is that's going on about uh, uh, in in your life. Um, and so here's here's some things going on right now. I think in the next episode I'm going to do. I want to walk through some some webinar stats. Um, you guys know that I've been on my own now for about five weeks. Um, uh, totally solo, self-employed. Uh, had a lot of fun with it. It's been been a whirlwind. Um, I want to walk through some stats. I'll probably do the next episode because it'll be a little bit long, but I want to walk through a few specific, specific things with you. But as far as, like, that's the business. But for my own personal self, how I've been handling it, it's pretty interesting. Okay, this is how it worked out. Week number one, like, sickening anxiety. Like, <laughs> like holy crap, why did I do this? You know what I mean? And uh, anything, um, a lot of things amazing in my life, I've had those feelings as I'm pulling the trigger, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I sure I want to do this? You know, and I get that. And I get that. A lot of people get that. Week two for me, I was excited. I had the first big successes. Week three and four for me, I was gone a lot because I was traveling and speaking like crazy in three different events. And uh, week four um, uh, was kind of a cleanup week, fulfilling of things I sold in the previous weeks. And it's been kind of this whirlwind up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Where I'm like, yeah, this is working. Oh my gosh. And then I go back and I'm like, oh crap. Like, look at the, I have so many things wrong with what I've launched so far. Uh, I'm going back and I'm fixing it and I'm, I'm not wrong, but you know, things I want to optimize and, uh, and change and improve. And just know that like the, <laughs> your personal development is as much a part of the business as the business itself. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the whole thing I'm trying to say with it. And being scared to share the stories of the things you're going through on a personal level is not helping your business. It will actually hurt your business. It will help you tremendously. It will help get a following around you. So what I would do, this is what I would do. I would sit down. This is actually what I do right behind me right now. There's a whiteboard and it is chock full of storylines of things that are going on in my life that I can talk about. Okay. And the longer I've podcasted, the longer I've done anything internet marketing, the longer I've done any kind of thing in this game. Okay. The more I've realized how much this whole thing is about storytelling. All of it is storytelling. Okay. Every funnel is its own story. The link between the funnels, there's a story. Uh, how I got into it, there's a story. It's all storytelling. If there's one thing that you can get good at, it's storytelling. Okay. You can screw up 90% of your funnels right? And be good at storytelling and they'll still work out just fine. Right? Why? Why? 
it's I'm not making that up. Okay, I've seen a lot of people where their their funnels look like straight up trash, but that's fine. They sell like hotcakes because they're good at the story part, and that's that's how that's the reality of it. It's not so much what the funnel looks like. It's can you evoke emotion in those who are coming to your pages? Can you evoke or your business? All right, can you evoke emotion? If you're just another faceless corporation and you're literally your entire company is is represented in a single logo, people are not in love with you. They might be in love with some outcomes that you get, but then if then if another person comes along and can beat you out, they'll start comparing you on features rather than emotions. Okay, that's super important. What I just said, if you want to be compared by features, don't tell stories, right? And what I'm saying is, someone will always be better, faster, stronger, right? And it, you might be number one. That's great. That's awesome. But man, you will fight tooth and nail to stay there, which is great. And, and you know, I'm fighting tooth and nail to try and be one of the best funnel builders in the world, right? And I, that's what I'm doing. And I have tons of people asking me to build their funnels, and I cannot accept them, right? There's way too much going on. But like, I, it's that, that's, that's the whole reason for it. Get good at telling stories, and you'll have to sell hard. You have to sell hard less. Get good at marketing, and it negates some of the need for hard sales. Get good at, at, at telling stories. And you're not going to have to compete on features, right? Because there's an emotion behind it. You know what's interesting is, is as, I was, as I was launching this webinar, um, and then I'll end it here. As I was launching this webinar, there were, I mean, the very first week, there was a whole bunch of issues with it. I mean, there's tons of issues with it. I knew that. And my customers knew that. And they were willing to stick through some of the weird things, some of the tech issues I hadn't figured out yet, um, you know, or, or just hadn't put any t- attention to yet. They were willing to stick through that stuff because of the emotional connection they have felt with me through these podcasts, right? I'm selling a, an MLM product and it's doing really well. And uh, I've got a whole separate MLM show. And uh, because I have created that connection with those people, man, I hardly had to sell them very hard at all, right? Hardly at all. And and the weird stuff, that's the whole point of it. Guys, I just had my, in my, my router, my modem, uh, get moved up into my home I'm in my actual office here where my computer is because uh, my speed was slowing down you know my router was uh, they just barely left actually my speed was slowing down because I was, it was in another room another uh, uh, another floor actually and so it was cutting my upload and download speed in half and I was frustrated I'm not gonna lie and I was super frustrated and when I called them this lady just chummed it up and chatted with me and talked about where I was from and and the people that showed up on the doorstep they came and they they uh, they when they, they switched all the stuff they were awesome and they it wasn't just about the business okay they took the time to under to to treat me like a human being like a person something that they would you know someone they would want to actually talk with and it was noticeable to me and I've actually sat and reflected on it here earlier this morning and I was like huh you know what? I was actually totally fine. And I was more understanding because of the stories that they brought me through, both my own and their personal ones, back and forth. And that's what brought the connection. That's what brought the emotion. And I was willing to actually put up with some stuff that was a little bit weird that I, frankly, if I didn't want to put up with, maybe I wouldn't have needed to, right? But I did put up with it. And now that everything's fixed. It's fine. It's great. Everything's awesome. It's fast, you know, and it's great. <laughs> but uh, it's because of the story. It's because of the emotional connection. And if people are, are continually bombarding you, right, with these features like, well, this is faster. This is better. This is a, this. Well, what about this? Can I get a cut down here? It's because they have no connection with you. Okay, start telling your stories. Don't be afraid to talk about your pants ripping. <laughs> or don't be t- afraid to talk about, you know, uh, the way you got into this. Just publish this whole funnel game, guys. All of it. You can. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but you can screw up on your funnels in a major way and be good at publishing and storytelling and you'll still do great, okay? That's like being insanely amazing. That's what a funnel is. It's a story. It's a progression. Sometimes people don't have great con- conversions on any of their pages and I start looking at them and it's like, well, it's because you're just talking to me like I'm might be a potential sale you're not actually talking to me like a human being what's the story here what's the hook okay that's another word for it what's the hook what's the hook throughout the whole thing right the hook of the headline the hook of the of the sales copy all anyway anyway that's all i'm trying to say you guys i hope that makes sense Uh, um and what i would do as far as an actionable thing from this episode i would sit down and and i've got a i've got actual whiteboard right back there and i just put down storylines of all the things that are going on in my life and when i'm like you know i i kind of want to put a podcast out there and there's this principle I want to describe, like, cool, what story can I wrap it in, right? 
get good at storytelling, get good at that piece. And what I would do is, uh, if you're like, hey, Steven, I really don't want to start publishing, um, uh, I would seriously challenge that and invite you to reconsider. Um, but if you're like, hey, I really got to, I, I, I want to practice. I don't feel like I'm good enough at this yet. Just start, I mean, start telling other people's stories, okay? Um, uh, my dad is actually super good at this. So uh, as a kid, um, he would just tell us random stories all the time. I didn't realize this till literally right now. And he would just tell us stories all the time. And he would make them up right off the top of his head. And they were completely imaginary. And um, But he helped me get good at storytelling because of he because how he would do that all the time. And then it would be our turn to tell the story. And he came over, uh, he was over here like a week ago, and I noticed he was doing it with my kids. And I was like, huh, he's, I don't think he realized what he was doing with me when he did that, but he lays down on the floor with them and they're all just kind of looking at the ceiling and he just starts telling a story. And uh, seriously, it'll be about uh, uh, my two girls and uh, make-believe kitty. And they go on an adventure and there's conflict and there's resolution and that's literally it's an epiphany bridge story i don't think he realized that that's what he's doing but uh that is it okay and then at the end he'll have he'll ask my little girls to tell to start telling the story and they're four and two right and they're practicing and of course the plot and the conflict and the characters and all that's not that amazing of course it's not that's totally fine it's just getting in the habit of it coming up with the imagination piece of it is huge if I was to go back to school, which I seriously doubt I'll ever do that, but if I was to do that whole piece over again, I would focus on storytelling, I'd focus on debate, I'd focus on design, right? I'd probably do the marketing degree again because I did learn some great th- great things from there, but um, that would be where the focus is. It's the ability to be creative. There's a book that's sitting right next to me. It's called A Whole New Mind. I recommend it to everybody. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's a book. It's by Daniel Pink. Uh, it's called uh, the sub subtext is why right brain thinkers will rule the future. And the context and the and of the entire book and the premise of the book is that like look, especially in Western culture, are you farming right now by necessity? No. Are you sewing your own clothes? No. Are you building a dam to create electricity? No. Okay, the majority of the basics for life are, are are here, right? You have to actually work to die of poverty in this country, right? You do. In almost every country now, there's welfare programs. You, It would be hard. You literally would have to do nothing, okay, to, to try and make sure that you would die by starvation, right? There's programs. There's it, It's hard to fail. And so, okay... Because of that, it is such a huge crutch, okay? Huge crutch for a lot of people's progress because uh, if the the need really isn't there, then I don't really need to figure out how to make this whole business work, right? I don't really need to work about, I don't need to learn about storytelling, okay? But the whole premise of the book says, look, there's so much that is actually taken care of for us, right? The left brain part of the, uh, uh, sorry, the left side of the brain, right? Uh, uh, the very analytical side, right? Factory work style. That, that, okay, the future belongs to the right-brained thinker, the storyteller, the creative. I'm inviting you to learn how to do that, to learn how to be a creative. Okay, and you're like, oh, I don't know how to be creative. Guess what? I, I didn't know how to do that stuff either. Okay, I'm pretty sure my dad stimulated a lot of that by just telling lots of stories. He would do it at dinner about his childhood. He would do it, you know, at bedtimes. And then and he would do it all over the place. I had no idea. I had no idea until literally like just a little bit ago. As I started watching the way he would interact with my girls and I was like, wait a second. This has been like a pattern throughout my life. And I wish, anyway, I'm just glad that I recognized it early on. Tell stories. Even if they're not, even, even if they're complete make-believe. Tell stories. Get good at telling stories. Marketing is storytelling. Okay, it's the transfer of belief by changing the story inside someone's head. That's all it is. Okay, and and your ability to do that is like it, it takes the cake on on ninety percent of the stuff that that I teach in this podcast. Ninety percent of the internet marketing world. Okay, if you just get good at telling the story, it'll it, anyway. I'm saying the same thing over and over again now. I just hope that makes sense. And I want you guys to go through and start doing that. And I would, it's like I was saying before, actionable stuff. Guys, just start keeping lists of the, of the things that are going on in your life. The little storylines, right? And if, uh, and if you look at uh, Inside Expert Secrets, right? Uh, what makes a story is a character, right? Uh, and a plot and a conflict. I think those are the three. Just start coming up with that. 
you're the character, right? Right. What's 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 the what's the actual storyline? Where's the where's the plot? Where's the conflict? Where's the resolution inside of it? And then boom, just keep coming up with it over and over and over and over again. Script writing. I'm not amazing at script writing, but uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, I'm I'm pretty good at storytelling. And because of that, I have gotten by pretty well with it. And um and, and I did a lot also when I was in a ClickFunnels employee. And uh, at least the basic. Uh, foundation of a lot of the things that I would write would be okay, especially by the time I left. Um, and they would be just edited rather than scrapped completely and because of the storytelling. It's the story that the funnel has a story. The page has a story. It all links together. They're all one one big story. And it links into your origin story as to why people should get there. And anyway, anyway, <laughs> should I just keep saying the word story? <laughs> story, 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 story. <laughs> so go think through the things that go on in your life, the things that are strengths, the things that are weaknesses, right? But more importantly, your differences, right? I just told you that I ripped my pants on stage and, <laughs> and it was awkward. <laughs> and it's because I don't care. It's because it develops my attractive character. You literally have more of a bond to me now emotionally than before I told you that, okay? It, it, it takes me and makes me more of a real person inside your head right? I know that's what's happening. Anyway, start doing that to your own people. That's all I got for you guys. Talk to you in the next episode. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today. 